Now the moment of truth. Will my wheels fit? Oh, look at that. What is up YouTube? Johnny B here again today. And we're gonna be bringing you a video that you guys have been waiting for over two months now. And I have obviously been waiting a lot for it because I've had these parts sitting in my garage for a little over two months now. And usually I get a little itch that as soon as I buy a modification for my car, I wanna install it the very next day, but sometimes I have to wait till the weekend. But for this, I just hadn't had the opportunity to set up the shop yet, but now we're all set up. The lift now has power. And obviously, as you guys can see, the FRS is up in the air. So now we are finally gonna go ahead and install these. All right, so the game plan for today is to go ahead and replace these stock calipers with the Brembo ones. At the same time, replace the stock rotors with some STI slotted rotors from StopTech. And then for the brake lines, these are the OEM rubber ones, which need a little upgrading. So we're gonna put some StopTech stainless steel ones just to kind of help better the feel of the pedal. And then obviously we're gonna go ahead and install some Hawk HPS brake pads so they have a little bit better bite. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is remove the brake line. Since we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper, might as well start bleeding the system. Start getting all the old oil out of here or brake fluid. And make sure that you have a container down below underneath it because we're about to start dripping. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the brake line from the, this bracket here that's held onto the coilover. Off. Okay, so, so to continue removing the brake line, you're gonna need a tool like this. It's a special tool, the 10 millimeter open-ended wrench. This is made specifically for brake lines. If you don't have one, make sure you go buy one because if you don't, you're gonna regret it. So let's go ahead and loosen this up. Okay, so now after you loosen it up, it should just come out like that. Now, to remove the remaining part of the brake line, there's this little clip here. All you have to do is get a flathead screwdriver and then just pry it out. It's, it's not an easy piece to remove, so it's gonna take you a little while. You might need a pry bar or something else. And then, after that, you can literally just pull the brake line out. The next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is remove the caliper, but one of the bolts is directly lined up with this bottom part of the ABS cable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the clip just to get it out of the way. So it'll be easier for me to actually remove the bolt for the caliper. All it is, it's a little clip, so you just have to push it aside. And then we can go ahead and remove the caliper bolts. All right, guys. So to remove the caliper, you're gonna remove two bolts. This one here, and then one right on top right up here. So let's go ahead and remove these first. You're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket to be able to get these off. There you go. If you have an extended ratchet like this or a breaker bar, that would always be a lot more useful. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this top one. Now, after you've taken both of those bolts out, you can just pull the caliper off. Okay, so now we, we have to go ahead and remove the rotors. These are floating rotors, so you can literally just probably hit them with a hammer and knock them off. Uh, but mine seem to be stuck on there quite, quite a bit. So I'm gonna be using two 12 millimeter bolts that are from another part of a car. This is actually from my parts car. But if you can find any bolts that actually thread onto the rotor, then you're in luck. You're doing them almost at the same time. So you tighten this one down a little bit, and then you tighten this one down a little bit. There we go. This rotor was literally stuck. I couldn't hammer it out. But with that, it literally just comes out like nothing. Okay, so now that we have the rotor off, you wanna make sure and inspect this area to make sure that it's clean, because this is where we're gonna put part of the kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some brake cleaner. 
and then wipe it down. If you have sandpaper, like let's say you have a lot of rust in this area, you can take a sandpaper to it. Make sure you get anything off because we need this to be flat as possible. So that way, this part of the kit, which is a spacer, sits perfectly flush. Now, before you put this on, you wanna make sure that you face it with the chamfered edge. So that way it counts for this little smoothness here because it's not perfectly flat in this section. So this is what this chamfered edge does. So that way the spacer sits perfectly flush on the hub. You want, But you wanna make sure it's nice and clean. Then you can go ahead and put it on like that. This spacer goes behind the rotor that we're gonna go ahead and install. So that way it lines up the disc the disc brake perfectly with the caliper so very important step on the frs you don't have to remove this little shield in the back on a wrx or any other subaru you you have to literally remove it or kind of cut it the only thing that i saw that I needed to do was this little tip right here actually gets in the way of the brembo uh, caliper push it just a little bit that way it clears the Brembo and then everything else can stay the same. All right, so now the next step is to put on this piece, which is the caliper bracket, which also comes with your CTSD brake swap kit. So the way that this goes, is like this. Here, we need to drill this with a 9 16th drill. Basically bore this hole out because the bolts for the ATSD Brembo calipers are much bigger. And on the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and tap it. Or if you don't want to tap it, you can go ahead and buy a bigger screw with a nut to hold the bottom part of the bracket because the Brembo is gonna go into these two. And this one is just gonna be holding the bracket along with this side. So let's go ahead and drill this first. Now the next step is to go ahead and drill out this top hole. And what you're gonna need is this 916 drill bit they don't come in most kits, so you might have to go buy one. I'll put a link down below where to get them cheaper. They're still like $12, $13, so it's pretty expensive, but it's definitely needed. And also what I'm gonna be using is some WD-40 or just something to lubricate this area while we're drilling. So let's go ahead and start. You wanna make sure you get it as straight as possible. Now, since there's a little bit of debris there, some metal, we wanna go ahead and get some brake cleaner. Just go ahead and clean that off. So now, for the bottom one, there is an included tap in your CTSD brake swap kit. So what this does is gonna, we're gonna thread this. And honestly, it's really easy. You just have to make sure you have one of these, which is specifically for holding these taps. If not, I would suggest you go try to get one from Harbor Freight or somewhere cheap because you're probably never going to use it again, honestly. But let's go ahead and start. Same thing. You want to make sure you get it as straight as possible. Also, you want to lubricate it. So I'm going to be using some WD-40. Take your time with the beginning because that's the most important. That's going to determine if it's straight or not. If at any moment it feels like it's getting stuck, you can reverse it a little bit kind of wiggle it around and then continue moving forward. The only reason that happens is because the metal shavings kind of get jammed in there. So now that you went all the way through, you went ahead and took it out, there's obviously gonna be some metal shavings. So once again, you're gonna use some brake cleaner. Go ahead and spray it all out. And look inside there, perfect threads. So the kit comes with six bolts. There are three for each side, two of them which are a little bit longer are the ones for the caliper. This shorter one is gonna be holding the bracket on the bottom. Okay, so let me show you guys this part that we went ahead and threaded. We used the tap, it's gonna be for the shorter bolt. We're gonna go ahead and put it in through the back and then just kind of hand tighten it. If you did the threads correctly, the bolt should go in fairly easy just by hand. go now these other two are the ones that are going to be holding the caliper so you can just place them there or place them there after the caliper but before that we need to go ahead 
and put the rotor back on. The next step is to go ahead and install the rotor. There it is. These are 2004 STI rotors. So that way they're, they're big, much bigger than the FRS ones, but they have the same exact bolt pattern as the FRS, the 5 on 100. So much better. These are stop techs and I got them slotted. Now you can go ahead and install the caliper. All right, so now that we have the rotor on, it's time to put on the caliper. So you're gonna need the two longer bolts. I like to just leave them in here a little bit, just that way I don't have to be messing with them or looking for them. And then all you have to do is get the caliper, kind of place it where it goes. Very simple, it's just like the other one, the factory one. And you just gotta line up the bolts with the caliper. I'm gonna be doing it with my hands first and then we will tighten it down properly. Okay, so now we can go ahead and tighten all the bolts down. They are 18 millimeters, is what is supplied with the kit. So I'm gonna be using a wrench to tighten them down and then I will torque them down after this. After everything's tightened down, you wanna make sure that the rotor is moving. Obviously that there's enough spacing in between the rotor and the actual caliper itself. If not, you might need to go ahead and tighten the rotor down properly, but it should all fit perfectly like it is right here with me. There's no rubber or nothing. So now we can go ahead and install the brake pads. So you're gonna wanna take the grease that's provided with the Hawk pads and go ahead and put them on the actual brake pads. You wanna make sure you get the, the sides because this is where the actual brake pad slides and where the pins are gonna be going in. So any part that's gonna be moving, you wanna make sure you grease it up. And if you get any on the actual brake pad itself, you wanna make sure you clean that off. Also put some on the back because this is where the pistons are actually gonna sit and we don't want anything squeaking so it's better to just grease it up. That way everything is sliding nice and smooth. Now we just put them in, they slide right in one and now we put on the second one you want to make sure that these little parts sections with the holes in them are facing upwards so now we're going to go ahead and put the hardware this is what's going to hold the brake pads in place and keep them there nice and tight so we're going to go ahead and pass the first pin they go in through the back and you want to make sure they line up with the with the brake caliper caliper and the actual brake pads. So you might have to move the pads a little bit and then line them all up. So for the first one, you just put the pin in and then you take this little piece of the hardware, you just slide it literally under and then we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom one, but you're gonna have to put some pressure on this little thing right here. go it's not it's not relatively easy but you can get it all right so there everything is in place so this came with my chisel kit it's an actual punch and it's about the size of the pins so this is going to help me hit the pins directly and then i can just hammer them in so let me show you how we do that you want to make sure you line it up with the pin and then hammer it in Now we're gonna go ahead and install the brake line. So you wanna take your new brake line and just, basically it's a reverse order of how you took off the other one. You just wanna go ahead and put it in place and kinda screw it on before you put the pin that holds it in. So before you tighten this part of the brake line, you wanna make sure you line it all up first. So this is where the mount goes and then this is where it's going to hook up to the back part of the caliper so you want to make sure you get it a nice nice angle this thing it doesn't twist very well but right here if you don't tighten it you have some wiggle room you see how you can twist it and move it so you want to set it all up first to where it's not in a twisted manner then you can go ahead and tighten this one down it's how i saw that it was easiest for me so let's go ahead and put this on so if you have your banjo bowl on you, you want to make sure that the line is facing up because that's how they come from, from factory and this will help with the bleeding. So now we can just go ahead and bolt it on. We're going to use our hands first. We don't want to cross thread this or else we're going to ruin the caliper. 
Put it on there. And then you're gonna wanna tighten it down with a 12 millimeter wrench or socket. So these are crush washers. So if you, you have to put enough force on them so that they seal and that way the oil won't come out. So now we're gonna put the bracket that comes on the brake line where it goes on your coilover or on your strut. You wanna go ahead and bolt it on. You wanna make sure that when you're doing this, your hub is perfectly parallel to the car. That way the braided line is in an unstressed. If you have it stressed, it'll wanna have some like weird twist because it's the stainless steel and it won't be as flexible as the rubber. But if you have it in an un unstressed state here, that's how I found it was easiest. So remember if it's, if it's like kinking or it's twisting, you have this loose so you can actually twist this to get all the stress out of it. Now that we have it set up like this, we can go ahead and tighten it all down. But before we go ahead and tighten this the full way, you wanna go ahead and put this pin in it so it's not moving. So you're just gonna wanna place it where it goes and then just hammer it in. Now we can fully tighten it down. You wanna make sure you put enough pressure because this is a conical connection. So the, more, the tighter it is, the least chance of leaking, but make sure you don't over tighten it because you can break it. Uh, fair enough, now it's not moving. Now on to the back. So you guys saw all the performance add-ons that we did to the front brake system. And now you might be wondering, what are you gonna do to the back? Are you just gonna leave it stock? No, we are not. I ended up getting some StopTech rear rotors for the FRS and some hog pads. Unfortunately, the only option to run Brembo's in the rear that is a direct bolt-on fit are STI Brembo's. And those things run about $800 for the pair. And that's not really budget friendly. And we're also gonna add stainless steel braided StopTech brake lines. But on top of that, we're gonna be adding a second caliper. Till now, the process has been exactly the same as the front, except on the back, we're gonna have to remove the hub to be able to install our second caliper. So you're gonna wanna take off this nut. So let's go ahead and do that now. Normally this is not that easy to take off, but with air tools, it makes it so much easier. Okay, so if you have ever changed your brakes on your car before and you had drum brakes in the back, you know that these are the absolute worst to replace. I, I don't know what it is about them, but all these little springs, it just makes it really annoying to replace the pads. So since we're gonna be running dual calipers, this is actually gonna get deleted, which is perfect by me because I really don't like this type of brake system. This is what the handbrake uses. So we're also gonna be deleting the handbrake, but we're gonna be running dual caliper so it doesn't really matter to me I'm gonna have to rig up something else another way to stop the car while it's parked but let's go ahead and remove these you're gonna go ahead and start by removing these pins here and you're gonna be needing needle nose pliers to go ahead and grab the little tab okay and then you're gonna need a screwdriver to push on this enough so you can twist it and there we go should pop off just like that and there's one spring under here that you need to unhook from one side so I'm just gonna take my needle nose pliers and pull it and unhook it like just like that now I'm gonna go ahead and just rip everything off
Since we're gonna be removing the hub, I'm gonna go ahead and smack this out a little bit, just so that way it gets loose. Now we can go ahead and unbolt the hub from the back. You're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket and there's four of them right through the back. So the four bolts are directly around this right here. So there's two on this side and two on the front side. So all you have to do is take them off. It's a little difficult to get to them. So just figure out a way that works best for you. And then the top one. So now they're loose. I'm just gonna go ahead and take them out with my hand and the socket. We are on the last bolt and this should now come out. Let's wiggle around a little bit. There we go. Here's the hub. And here's the bracket for the drum brakes, which we're not gonna be needing anymore. So I'm just gonna put those to the side we can go ahead and remove that line later. Okay, so the way we're gonna put the second caliper is with this bracket here. So the way this sits is it lines up with all these four bolts and it's gonna have the caliper sitting at the same angle as the original one. So as you guys can see, there's like a little peak, just like there's a peak that way. And these should be flush with the other connections. So this is what we're gonna be using to run the second caliper. But first, we have to mount this to the hub because I found it was a little bit easier to do. If you guys are interested in getting these, these are from SRS Concept, and I will put a link down below in the description. So you wanna go ahead and mount the dual caliper bracket to your hub and make sure that all four holes are lining up just like that. You might need a rubber mallet to go ahead and smack it in. So now that it's all on there, let's go ahead and put it on. I'm gonna have to adjust the axle go now we can go ahead and bolt it back on now we can go ahead and put the nut back on now we can go ahead and put the rotor on put this on there so it'll hold it in place so now on the rear caliper we're gonna go ahead and replace the pads with some Hawk performance Get rid of the old ones that are just basically the stock ones still. They have about half life on them. So let's go ahead and grease these up. Always remember to grease them where they're gonna be in contact. And they need to be able to slide properly. Got it. So now that we have the new pads on, we can go ahead and put the caliper on. So for the second caliper, what we're gonna be using is the same exact one as OEM. This is literally from my parts FRS that I showed you guys in my destroying my FRS video. We got them from that car. And the only thing you need to do is you need to flip them. So this is supposed to be for the left side, but we're gonna be using it for the right side just because of the fact that the bleeder is gonna be on top that way, which is how you need the bleeder to be. You don't wanna be bleeding the brakes from underneath because it'll always be catching air. So it needs to be facing up so this is gonna work perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and bolt it on. So let's go ahead and put it on. And the bolts for them actually come with the kit. So you don't need to be sourcing out your own bolts. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the brake lines just like we did in the front. It's fairly simple. We already did it once. Should be a lot easier to do now. All right, so same thing as the front. Go ahead and put your banjo bolt on that came with your kit and bolt it on.
So there we go. The steel braided brake lines are now fully on. Just make sure you go ahead and put the clip in and tighten everything down. Okay, so now the only thing left to do is to bleed the brakes and obviously remove the e-brake cable, which is relatively simple. So that's just basically going to the car and unbolting that. I'm not gonna show you guys that. So we'll be back after we're done so I can show you guys the wheels on the brake system. Now the moment of truth, will my wheels fit? Oh, look at that. All right guys, we are finally done bleeding the brakes. We were able to get the wheels on and oh my God, it looks amazing. If you guys would have known my fear, seeing the rims actually fit was such a relief for me. Just because of the fact that my wheels are 17 inch wheels, which are basically stock size, but they're step lip. So what that means is that the inside of the rim is literally like a 16 inch wheel. So, these are really big Brembo's and I wasn't gonna sure, you know, I wasn't sure at all if they were gonna fit with the rims that I have now. So I, I was freaking out, I didn't know what to do. But I test fit them and they barely fit. It's pretty amazing how close they are. You guys can see that the rim is like literally like a millimeter or two off of the, the Brembo. And there's not gonna be any flex, there's not gonna be any movement, so they're not gonna scrape or rub or anything. So that's awesome. Uh, so we are done with this video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed and as always you guys have a great day